Howdy folks! Welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. Today on this debut episode we are going to be talking about the new streaming series sensation The Mandalorian. Now ever since Disney purchased the rights to the Star Wars series from Lucasfilm there's been a lot of controversy about what they've done with the sequel movies. There's been a lot of dis dissatisfaction among long-term fans like myself, particularly with the most recently released one, The Last Jedi. Now, The Mandalorian has been showing on the Disney Plus network, and it is, of course, produced by the same company, but it's totally different as far as the feel and the way it's been presenting the Star Wars canon. This is a series that Star Wars fans actually like. And it's not, it doesn't appear to be agenda driven or anything like that. It's actually some entertaining stories and adventures. Now I already some people have been saying that the Mandalorian doesn't have enough female characters. Well maybe they were a little bit too quick to jump the gun on that. And if you're the kind of person who counts the number of actors of each gender, then it probably isn't the show for you. But if you do want science fiction adventure, then this is something to check out. It takes place in a Wild West setting, kind of more, more or less, that happens right after the fall of the Empire, which happened, as you would remember, if you're a Star Wars fan, after the film, um, Return of the Jedi, where they destroy the Death Star over the moon of Endor. Now, there's a lot of chaos and uh, lack of order in this world, and a lot of bounty hunters that are out to catch the criminals and uh, fugitives and bad people that are out there. One of these, among the bounty hunters, is the Mandalorian group. It's kind of a cult or a sect or a tribe that are, they are all bounty hunters and they're very well armed, they're very well trained, and they're very honorable. And they have a strict code. <clears throat> and, and they always get their man, kind of like the Mounties. <laughs> uh, and our hero, which whom we call Mando, I'm not sure if that's his actual name or if it's just something people call him because he's a Mandalorian. Anyway, Mando gets a new contract for a an awful lot of money, or credits, or whatever it is. I believe it's like this this Beskar material which they make their armor from, which is very, very valuable. In any case, it turns out not to be a bad guy, not to be a fugitive, but a child. It's not a human child, it's a child of a different species that will be very familiar to Star Wars fans because he's the spitting image of the Jedi Master Yoda. Now, of course, we don't know if he's actual relation of Yoda, just that he's, he's a member of the same species. He's very cute, and he already has some of those force powers that uh, we would imagine he would have. Now, one of the things about the Mandalorians is that they are honorable, and, and uh, Mando begins to wonder whether he's doing the right thing in delivering this baby to these people whom he suspects are really bad people. And therefore, he questions whether or not he should fulfill his code. Now, here's a place where I wonder about the, the show's integrity. A little bit of a spoiler here, folks. But would the Mandalorians really support a member of their, of their own that broke the code, even if it was for, for a good cause? Or would they be very strict about it? Because, for example, they can't talk about any of these any of these cases with other people. And also, uh, people who worried that the, that the Mandalorian wouldn't have strong female characters were mistaken, because by, by the fourth episode we do meet a very strong and charming female warrior, which uh, whom Mando teams up with. So we have that too. We have action, we have cool aliens and droids, we have all the, the fun Star Wars references and uh, little sight bits, even a little bit of humor that we're used to in the Star Wars universe. I highly recommend it. Now it's coming out once a week 
and, and like an old traditional TV show, and so far we've seen, uh, as of this airing, we've seen the fourth episode, and all pretty good. If you don't have the Disney Plus network for other reasons, you may be able to get it if you're a Verizon subscriber. That's how we got it, and we were very happy about that opportunity. In short, I would rate the show 5 out of 5 gears. Give it my highest rating, and I highly recommend you see it, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. So, let me know what you think about this review. Please like and share. Give us our com give your comments below. And come back to see us again at the Star Steampunk Desperado channel. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos, and come back soon to the Steampunk Desperado channel.